So my name is John Whitcomb. I'm the Dean of Coventry. My responsibility is to look after Coventry Cathedral, to lead us in our worship and in our daily life and in all the varied aspects of our mission here in the centre of the city. So today we're going to make pancakes. Lots of people enjoy pancakes, of course, uh, but the tradition of pancakes is that they were what was made and eaten on Shrove Tuesday. That's the day before the beginning of the Christian Lenten feast, uh, which begins on Ash Wednesday. And the idea was that uh, in monastic communities and local villages, that people would prepare for the season of Lent through a process of, uh, of self-examination, of confession, and seek absolution. And then the season of Lent was a time of penitence. And in that time of penitence, you are supposed to uh, eat very basic um, foods, those things which would lead you to recognize that life depends on God, and not on food, so it's to focus your attention for those 40 days. So of course you had to get rid of all the rich foods in your house, and that would include things like butter and eggs, in particular milk and flour. I think they could probably eat flour during Lent, but anyway. So the tradition was to have an absolute blowout on uh, Shrove Tuesday. Um, presumably then you could start the beginning of Lent by sleeping it off. Pancakes have been something that have been enjoyed through so many different traditions, but in the Christian tradition, there's something that we do to mark the day before the beginning of Lent. Okay, so uh, making pancakes is not a, difficult, uh, not a difficult activity. I've been doing it with the family for very many years. Um, let's see how it goes today. We've got uh, seven ounces of flour here, and we're just gonna uh, sift it to get lots of air into it. Like so many of um, my generation in this culture and this country, of course, I'm following the Saint uh, Delia method. Um, so she's very, very keen to get lots of air into your mixture. So um, this is how I have been uh, in the habit of doing this uh, for so many years. So there we are, we've got the flour sifted into the bowl, just like that. And then we're going to make a little well um, uh, in the center of the bowl, just to, to break the eggs into. One of my colleagues, my, uh, our canon for worship and community here, Catherine, is, uh, is a, a keen keeper of chickens. So we have the advantage here in the deanery of being able to use Catherine's eggs. Um, so uh, that's a really nice gift for us here. So we're just going to um, uh, bring all of this together into the center of this bowl here. This is not a technical, technically difficult thing to do. And it's quite nice to imagine as we're doing this actually, that this has been a practice since at least um, uh, medieval times or middle ages. There's um, evidence of people doing this uh, since those times. There we go. Uh, so we're getting all of that into there so it's nicely mixed. And then we're going to um, begin to um, uh, incorporate this milk and water. So um, one of the things, of course, that people sometimes do in, on pancake day is to, um, is to do pancake races. And uh, I just did a little bit of research on that. And it turns out that the earliest um, record of that is sometime in the 1500s, when apparently somebody in a village in Buckinghamshire was, um, was making pancakes on Shrove Tuesday and then heard the church bell ringing and realized that she was late for the church service. And so um, she ran out of the house with the frying pan in her hand and uh, because she didn't want the pancake that she was in the middle of making uh, to stick to the pan, uh, she uh, flipped the pancake, she tossed the pancake as she was running to church. Um, it's a great story. Um, there's no photographic evidence, um, but I quite like the story. I always think, oh my gosh, there's too much milk to flour and all that sort of thing. Um, but you just have to kind of trust that you've measured it out right, because otherwise it's going to end up really heavy. And I think we can probably risk putting all that in. So we're going to melt. Um, we've got a couple of ounces of butter melting it into this pan. Let's just get this butter melted, but not burnt. So people like to um, uh, to prepare their pancakes, usually in a fairly similar sort of way, but then of course, 
when it comes to what you put on them, that's where one of the great uh, one of the great differences happens. And I suppose going back to the origins, uh, people perhaps would have put all sorts of different things on their pancakes. Today, we're going to, when it comes to it, we're just going to go very traditional. We've got lemon and sugar. The, the lemon really just to take away the sweetness um, and to give that little bit of a bit of a tang. So there we are. We've got some melted butter, and we're going to put a couple of tablespoons of that into the mixture, and then going to keep a little bit to lubricate the pan. So here we go. So we've got our batter made. You can see it only takes absolutely a moment. Um, so now we're just going to um, warm this pan, get it quite hot, get um, a little bit of the butter into the pan, but not too much, because if we have too much, then the batter will just end up um, kind of, it'll sort of float all round uh, the pan, and that's not really what you want. So you want just enough just to kind of grease the pan, really. Uh, but then we are going to need the pan quite hot. So that Lenten experience of just waiting for a moment, that's what we're, that's what we're doing just now. So let's just have another go and see if this is... Yep, so we've got a nice little sizzle there. So we're going to pop this in here. Now, of course, I'm guessing that what you're all going to be waiting to see is if I'm going to toss it. It's actually quite difficult to do that, so I might give it a try, um, but I absolutely can't guarantee. So we might, we might just see how we go on that. Yeah, we've still got a little bit to go before it gets... Um, let's turn the heat down a little bit. OK. Whoa! Well, we did a kind of half toss there. We got part of it in, but then we're just going to try and uh, turn it out a little bit in the bowl here, in the pan here. Oh, dear. Well, there we are. It's a bit of a, a, bit, a slightly mangled pancake there. We're going to try it again in a minute, though. We're making better progress than I feared, actually. <laughs> So the cathedral, which we're, which we're just uh, by here, the new cathedral was opened in 1962. It was built to, well, not to replace exactly, but to go alongside the old cathedral, which was built back in the 1400s, around the time that this sort of uh, tradition was really being developed, which was bombed and destroyed, of course, in... Uh, in 1940. So in 1962, the new cathedral was, was opened um, as a way of signifying hope being born out of destruction. So for me to have the responsibility of for both of those buildings is a huge privilege. And one of the things actually, of course, that we love doing is bringing people of different faith traditions into the building. So I was speaking earlier about Ramadan and uh, the breaking of the fast, as, as I'm sure many will know, at the end of each day of Ramadan is called the iftar. And so some of us recently have been used to being welcomed by our local mosques into to share with them in their iftar, but we were able to offer the cathedrals a place for the local Muslim community to come to us to hold their iftar. And so we had uh, uh, Muslim sisters and brothers with us in the cathedral um, for their prayers and then to break their fast, which was such a lovely thing to do. So as a cathedral, um, we know that we're there really for the whole of the, of the, of the city. Um, uh, in fact, one of the beautiful phrases that we heard recently uh, was uh, a... Um, uh, was, a, was of a local Muslim woman saying to me, uh, the cathedral is my mosque, which I found immensely moving. So we're just gonna give this another try. Let's see how this goes. Ah, oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> um, so we're just gonna brown that side and then uh, just pause for a brief moment of, oh my gosh, that worked. <laughs> Um, that's a very good start to the season of Lent, isn't it? So you can kind of live off that brief moment of triumph um, for the next 40 days as you're thinking about those times of deprivation. So there we have um, uh, a lovely, just lightly browned pancake. Um, so we're just going to put that gently onto the plate. And then, of course, what we need is some lemon juice. Um, I like quite a lot of lemon juice, actually. Um, so we'll put quite a bit of that on there. It's always good luck, I think, to have a pip. Um, and uh, I've actually found one of my, uh, these lovely little, little apostle spoons. So it's a, a bit of a tradition. Um, I'm sure these were from uh, a grandmother somewhere along the lines that most, many Victorian houses had these little apostle teaspoons with images of the, um, of the apostles from scripture on them. So then let's just put a little bit of this sugar on here. And then 
uh, just excuse my fingers a moment, we're going to just uh, turn that like that. And there we have um, one of this year's pancakes. It looks a little thick to me, but then at least we were able to toss it, so that was good. Let's just see how it goes. Definitely good enough. Excellent. Thank you so much for watching this. Um, make your pancakes. Think about the way that they are a way of celebrating the goodness of all the, uh, all the things God gives us, but also as a way that may lead us into this time of self-reflection and, uh, and putting things right in our lives, focusing back on the things that really matter during the season of Lent in preparation for Easter.